a charcoal burner. A charcoal burner carried on his trade in his own house. One day he met a friend, a fuller, and entreated him to come and live with him, saying that they should be far better neighbors, and that their housekeeping expenses would be lessened. The fuller replied, The arrangement is impossible as far as I am concerned. For whatever I should whiten, you would immediately blacken again with your charcoal. Like will draw like. Teaching of the story is. Like will draw like. Avaricious and Envious Two neighbors came before Jupiter and prayed him to grant their heart's desire. Now the one was full of avarice, and the other eaten up with envy. So to punish them both, Jupiter granted that each might have whatever he wished for himself, but only on condition that his neighbor had twice as much. The avaricious man prayed to have a room full of gold. No sooner said than done. But all his joy was turned to grief when he found that his neighbor had two rooms full of the precious metal. Then came the turn of the envious man, who could not bear to think that his neighbor had any joy at all. So he prayed that he might have one of his own eyes put out, by which means his companion would become totally blind. Vices are their own punishment. Teaching of the story is. Vices are their own punishment. The Ass and the Lapdog There was once an ass whose master also owned a lapdog. This dog was a favorite and received many a pat and kind word from his master, as well as choice bits from his plate. Every day the dog would run to meet the master, frisking playfully about and leaping up to lick his hands and face. All this the ass saw with much discontent. Though he was well fed, he had much work to do. Besides, the master hardly ever took any notice of him. Now the jealous ass got it into his silly head that all he had to do to win his master's favor was to act like the dog. So one day he left his stable and clattered eagerly into the house. Finding his master seated at the dinner table, he kicked up his heels and, with a loud bray, pranced giddily around the table, upsetting it as he did so. Then he planted his forefeet on his master's knees and rolled out his tongue to lick the master's face, as he had seen the dog do. But his weight upset the chair, and ass and man rolled over together in the pile of broken dishes from the table. The master was much alarmed at the strange behavior of the ass, and calling for help soon attracted the attention of the servants. When they saw the danger the master was in from the clumsy beast, they set upon the ass and drove him with kicks and blows back to the stable. There they left him to mourn the foolishness that had brought him nothing but a sound beating. Teaching of the story is... Do not try to gain favor by acting in a way that is contrary to your own nature and character. The Birds, the Beasts, and the Bat The birds and the beasts declared war against each other. No compromise was possible, and so they went at it tooth and claw. It is said the quarrel grew out of the persecution the race of geese suffered at the teeth of the fox family. The beasts, too, had cause for fight. The eagle was constantly pouncing on the hare, and the owl dined daily on mice. It was a terrible battle. Many a hare and many a mouse died. Chickens and geese fell by the score and the victor always stopped for a feast. Now the Bat family had not openly joined either side. They were a very politic race. So when they saw the birds getting the better of it, 
they were birds for all there was in it. But when the tide of battle turned, they immediately sided with the beasts. When the battle was over, the conduct of the bats was discussed at the peace conference. Such deceit was unpardonable, and birds and beasts made common cause to drive out the bats. And since then, the bat family hides in dark towers and deserted ruins, flying out only in the night. The deceitful have no friends. Teaching of the story is. The deceitful have no friends. The Woodman and the Serpent One wintry day a woodman was tramping home from his work when he saw something black lying on the snow. When he came closer he saw it was a serpent to all appearance dead. But he took it up and put it in his bosom to warm while he hurried home. As soon as he got indoors he put the serpent down on the hearth before the fire. The children watched it and saw it slowly come to life again. Then one of them stooped down to stroke it, but the serpent raised its head and put out its fangs and was about to sting the child to death. So the woodman seized his axe, and with one stroke cut the serpent in two. Ah, said he. No gratitude from the wicked. Moral of the story is. No gratitude from the wicked. The Dog and the Wolf A gaunt wolf was almost dead with hunger when he happened to meet a house dog who was passing by. Ah, cousin, said the dog. I knew how it would be, your irregular life will soon be the ruin of you. Why do you not work steadily as I do, and get your food regularly given to you? I would have no objection, said the wolf, if I could only get a place. I will easily arrange that for you, said the dog. Come with me to my master and you shall share my work. So the wolf and the dog went towards the town together. On the way there the wolf noticed that the hair on a certain part of the dog's neck was very much worn away, so he asked him how that had come about. Oh, it is nothing, said the dog. That is only the place where the collar is put on at night to keep me chained up. It chafes a bit, but one soon gets used to it. Is that all, said the wolf. Then goodbye to you, master dog. Better starve free than be a fat slave. Teach him of the story is. Starving while free is better than becoming a fat slave and losing all freedom. <laughs>